In this video, I'm going to go over how to use this template and all of the customization options that are available. So first, I'm going to drag the PSD into Photoshop, and this is what you'll see. Then I'll come over to the Layers panel and double-click the thumbnail for this layer, named Double-Click Thumbnail to Edit. That will open a new window, and all you have to do is then paste your own image in here. So I'm going to go down to my Photos, and I'm going to drag this image in, and I'll scale it up to fit, and hit Enter. Next, I'll come up and close that new window, and when it asks me to save, I'll hit yes. And this is a super high resolution template, so it might take a minute to apply all of the effects, so we'll just have to wait a minute. So once all the effects are applied, you can see that it instantly adds our watercolor effect to the image. Next, I'll show you what all the customization options are. First, we'll come over to the effects layer group and expand that, and inside you'll see two layers. These are adjustment layers and the first one is named Shadow Shift. What this is is a color balance adjustment layer and if you go into the tone and choose shadows you'll see that it adds a bluish purple tint just to the shadows of our image. And this is something painters do a lot to simulate the difference in white balance between sun and shade in a painting so that just helps the painterly look. You don't really need to change the advanced settings but you can come down and change the opacity or just turn this layer on and off depending on your needs. The next adjustment layer is a saturation vibrance adjustment layer and all this does is just boost the saturation in the final image. You can increase and decrease these numbers or again just turn this on and off in the layers panel. Next is the texture overlays layer group and inside this are three artistic textures and I'm going to zoom in on my image so we can see that a little better. So if I turn this texture off, you'll see that there's no texture on my image, and you can turn one or more of these on at a time. If I select one of these textures, you'll see that it has a different fill opacity than some of the other ones. So each one is controlled independently, and you can adjust that to your liking as well. Next, we have the Styles layer group. And each style has slightly different settings, just to give the final result more or less detail. So if I turn all of these on, you'll see that Style 1 has the least amount of detail, Style 2 has a little bit more, and Style 3 has the most. This layer group also has a vector mask, so I'm going to zoom out, and you can see the edges of my image have a little fade out effect. So you can turn that on and off by right clicking that vector mask and choosing Disable Vector Mask or right-clicking and re-enabling it. Lastly, we have this solid color fill layer, and that's to change the background color. This only affects the image if you have the vector mask for the styles layer group turned on. So you can double-click that thumbnail and make it any color that you want. It's a really subtle effect, so you probably don't really need to change it much. We love to see what you create using our resources, so share your results with us on social media, and we'll check it out. I'm JT Shaver for New Layer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.